Hi, I'm Richard and I'm a photographer here in Los Angeles, California. I get a lot of questions about my photo shoots, how I go about setting them up, uh, what equipment do I use, um, what sort of locations I'm looking out for, just questions like that. So I thought I would set up this vlog or this series of vlogs to help answer some of those questions. It's not intended to be a tutorial or an equipment review. There are plenty of other people doing that and doing a really good job of it. This is really to give you a window on my work, my workflow, my process, my technique. Okay, cheers. Um, see you at the park. I'm gonna start by doing a little walk around here. It's one of the first things that I do when I'm doing a shoot is I scope out an area and decide what is gonna make for a good backdrop, uh, where the light maybe is, is good, um, where there are sort of fewer distractions, where there are maybe some elements that um, I can work with or I can have the, the subject work with, and um, just hopefully get a little bit inspired by my surroundings. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna walk around I'm going to call out anything that I see of interest and um, maybe you can just do the same sort of thing when you uh, comes to your own shoot. And in front of me I've noticed that the, the trees uh, have quite interesting colorations in the bark. That's definitely something I can work with. We just saw one there. There's another really interesting one that caught my attention over here. And plenty more of those in this park and just up and just up here you have this little reflection pool I love doing reflections on uh, water use surfaces or in glass so this is probably something that we can work with here and you'll see in the distance there there's a little rocky outcrop um, that acts as a sort of natural plant uh, other things I'm keeping a lookout for are leading lines this pathway is pretty cool. I always like pathways that are kind of bendy. Creates a nice sort of leading line along here. Curves away into the distance. You've got a bridge. Um, don't always love bridges because the railing's kind of a bit harsh and get in the way. In the distance there, you see an interesting curved tree. Um, I'm thinking I could do something with that. I like all the grass underneath it. So I've now come up to the top of the hill and I'm scouting around and noticed a few things already. Firstly, if I just, oh, I can't flip the screen, but I will turn around and let you see a whole bunch of wildflowers that are left over from spring here. A lot of them have died away. I mean, it was particularly good this spring for wildflowers and these things were about four feet high and just an explosion of yellow and a lot of people do uh, photography in amongst these flowers and trample them so definitely don't recommend that. The other thing I'm keeping a lookout for is because we're in Southern California snakes. Um, you do get rattlesnakes in these areas. My friend ran into one the other day had a bit of an encounter which was a little bit on the scary side. So definitely have to be mindful about things like that. So here's what I mean about some of those dead wildflower plants. I mean, it looks pretty cool and abstract. So that's gonna make for a good backdrop. You'll also notice um, the sky right now is quite bright and we have a marine layer earlier on in the day which burns away and becomes bright sun. So we might be fighting with bright light later on. So here's another great vista of the downtown skyline. Right in the distance, you can't see it right now, but we will be able to see that later on. Okay, so we're starting the actual shoot now, as you can see, and as predicted, the sun is now out. It's nice and harsh, which is very typical for LA. So I've added the flash, which is a Speedlight 430EX. I've got it on high speed sync, which I will talk about in a uh, probably another vlog, and I am using a um, 70 to 200 millimeter lens, f2.8, which is my go to lens for portraits. And we're going to be shooting Valeria over here, who's actually from Germany, an 
has just recently moved to Los Angeles and uh, was very uh, keen to take part in the blog. So check out her vlog too, and I'll put the details below, as I will with Ashley, who is behind the camera today. So um, I'm going to start by choosing Valeria in amongst the trees that I mentioned earlier on. Um, the light isn't too bad in the background, and I think the ambient light is going to light her sufficiently that I might not actually need the flash to begin with, but we'll just experiment and see how we get along, get along with that. I'm going to shoot low to get some nice bokeh in the grass here with the leaves and the, the mud and that will be nice and blurry and then the background will be blurry and then hopefully blurry will be a nice sharp focus so uh, I'll put the pictures up on the screen but you can just watch the process as I go through it now for a little bit. Looking good, Larry. Maybe uh, just put your back against the tree and just see how that looks. That's great. Okay, so those are looking pretty good to begin with. Like I said, I'll put a few of the pictures up on the screen as I'm going about this, and you can just see how they're coming out. Now I'm going to go in a bit tighter and get some nice close-ups on Valeria. She actually needs a few headshots as well, so this is an opportunity for me to grab a few of those. Now, it's always a good idea to check sharpness as you go because um, it's easy to, to have a setting that's wrong, especially when you're doing these sort of run and gun shoots, everything's moving very quickly, the light's constantly changing, you might have a lens issue. So it's always a good idea to just uh, check on the back of your camera and then use the zoom in function. I'm using a uh, Canon 5D Mark III right now. Zooming in. You always want to zoom in on the eyes and uh, make sure you've got those razor sharp. If they're not sharp, then the image is pretty much dead. You should probably just delete it, but looks like we're in good shape right now. We look nice and sharp. So we're in good shape. We're just going to carry on a few more poses and uh, experiments a little bit more in this area and then we'll move to our next location. Okay, so I just um, took a few pics, uh, initial pics with Valeria. They were coming out pretty nice. Um, I was firing my flash, but I actually think that the ambient light, so without the flash, would have been enough to just fill in those shadows nicely. Um, like I said, I'm shooting with a 5D Mark III with a 70-200 lens, f2.8, using a shallow depth of field to get the uh, grass really nice and blurry in the foreground and the background looking really nice and blurry. That creates a really good professional look. Um, but I am actually going to experiment. I'm going to use this reflector now to see if we can get a slightly different look. Um, it might be little tricky with the angle, trying to get the reflected light on Valeria and to hold the camera at the same time while Ashley films, but let's give it a go. So this is often how I'm doing it out in the field by myself and um, sometimes you just have to learn how to hold the camera which can be pretty heavy and the reflector at the same time so often it's good if you have an assistant handy. Beautiful. 
here. Okay, so I've just got a little warning from my camera that the lens was going to fall off. So, uh, just noticed it was actually loose. So I've tightened it up and we're back to shooting again. Scary there for a moment. Okay, you see what a difference it makes with the lights on the subject. It just uh, creates a really beautiful look. So I definitely recommend using a reflector. Okay, let's try the other tree now, Valeria. Just this next one along, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe you could be sort of leaning out from it, swinging from it. Exactly, perfect. The other good thing about using a reflector is it's going to um, add a little bit of a sparkle to her eyes, which always creates um, a bit more life in the eyes, creates a bit of energy, and uh, it's always good to have that little twinkle. Okay, perfect. So we'll wrap this location and we'll have a little walk over there to some of the other locations that I described earlier on. Um, we relocated now to that little pond that I described earlier on. I think it's a good setting, although we're fighting with the light a little bit. So we're going to have to use film flash to make this work. I've got my on-camera flash, and then I've also got the reflector here uh, to help modify the light a little bit and make this picture work. So let's try this out. You'll notice I switch lenses because it's a little bit tricky trying to hold the reflector and hold a very heavy 70 to 200 millimeter lens um, at the same time, so this should be a bit easier. Okay, when you look at these pictures after I put them up on the screen, pay attention to the little twinkle in the eye, I think it looks really nice. Now the good thing about working with Valeria is she is a yeah, professional model so obviously she knows how to cycle through the various poses so that's definitely very helpful you won't always have the opportunity to work with uh, professional models so you'll have to give a bit more direction in terms of the poses but right now Valeria is doing a great job so you know, I can't really it's not really much extra direction I can give her on it. How about one where you sort of both knees like that? Yeah. Okay, cool. That's so good. So I think we'll just move to our next location now. We'll review the pictures on the back of the camera, make sure they're all coming out good. And uh, check out that oil derrick that I saw earlier on. Here we are in the new location. We've got the oil derrick as a backdrop. Now the downside to this location is we've got really harsh um, sunlight hitting Valeria it creates all sorts of harsh shadows which is not usually a good look and uh, I'm going to try and fill those shadows in with flash but it's quite a challenge for the model to keep their eyes open under these sort of conditions so we're gonna we're gonna keep this to a minimum we're gonna just work really really fast and we might end up turning some of these pictures to black and white if 
and sometimes the high contrast look can look a lot better in black and white. Anyway, let's see. So we're going to move over here. I just spotted a tree that looks really good for the, um, our next set of picks. We've got the oil derricks in the background again, and hopefully the dress is going to look good with this uh, particular outfit. Over here. Over here. Sort of in here. Uh, like Really cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's, oh my gosh. But maybe not your leg up. Yeah, if I would put that leg down, you could put your right leg up. you want a leg up. Yeah, it's cool. It's a very cool look actually. I'm sure it's not comfortable though. Oh no. <laughs> So those came out great. Again, we'll put some of those up on the screen and uh, you can just see for yourself whether you think that worked or not. Now we're going to um, do another change of outfits. So we're going to move up to the back up to the top of the hill, grab some pictures from up there. Right, so we've changed location. I've picked this location because uh, the outfit Valeria has on has a sim similar sort of earthy, pastel -y, um, sort of colour tone as the uh, the surrounding area, and I think it's fairly simple. There's not many too not too many distractions that are going to interfere with the pig. A um, couple of things to look out for: the light's really harsh, so I've got her with the back to the sun, and then we'll use uh, flash or the reflector again. And uh, we're just going to keep a watch out for rattlesnakes. <laughs> Um, and passes by and that's about it. Hopefully we'll get some good picks in this location. So with the reflector, the key is you've just got to try and light up the entire body and head. Because if you leave any part of it out of the reflected light, then it just looks a bit odd. So uh, that's why you have a big reflector if you're going to use one. So I've lit up her entire body and head out there. And sometimes these things are a little hard to position to get the light right on the, the subject. So a little tip is to 
uh, hold the reflector such that you can see the reflective light on the floor and then just tilt it and keep the light up and up and up until you see the subject just completely light up and then you know you've got it in the right place. There you go. Hold that. That's great. Excellent picks, happy with those. Okay, let's make our way back up there. Okay. I've got one more spot in that dress and then, uh, and then we can do another switcheroo. Um, now we're back at that place that I identified earlier on when I was doing my scouting. Um, remember those uh, burnt out wildflowers? They look really interesting at the time. Not quite so good now that the sun's really harsh, but we're still going to give it a go and see what we come up with. So we wrapped up the photo shoots at that point and then we made our way back to the car and on the way um, along the road in front of us we noticed this four to five foot snake slithering its way across from one side of the road to the other. That was quite alarming to us because we didn't really notice until it was halfway across the road. So it's pretty amazing how they can sneak up on you like that. Um, anyway, hope you enjoyed the photo shoot. I'll leave a one to two second clip at the end of the snake and some pictures. Um, if you like this vlog, then please subscribe. That'll really help the channel. Um, also hit that like button, hit that little bell, and uh, hopefully see you for more of these vlogs. Cheers.